The second one has to do with the transparency of ownership. And again, um, I, I, I really commend uh, the, uh, the attempt of, um, of um, uh, the European Union to regulate that field. I think it, it's, it's needed. And um, the, uh, the provisions related to the monitoring of media ownership, I think, are very important. Um, but from the very start, I think there are two things here. Uh, why is it important to know who owns the media? I think it is important for the general public. And it is important, secondly, for the enforcement of regulation. While it is, of course, uh, very relevant for people to know who owns the media, let's be very honest and let's uh, let's uh, agree that not so many people, you know, will look through databases to to find on a daily basis who owns what media outlet operates in a country. But for the enforcement of regulation, you really need data. You really need uh, data to have this uh, these legal provisions implemented. That being said, I think the current mechanisms put forward in the in the legislations uh, in the legislation are not sufficient. Um, a, the, a lot of the uh, of the um, the work in this field is falling on the shoulders of again national regulatory authorities, which is great. They, they should play a role there. But I really think that we have to think about a mechanism um, that would monitor media ownership that would consist more of neutral. Uh, independent organizations and individuals coming, for example, from academia. A lot of the ownership links, for example, cannot be detected by national regulators. This is really difficult work and usually investigative journalists are doing a great job there. So I think a mechanism that would include such people really able to, uh, to dig for ownership links should be, should be created.